a lot of rumors are going around on the internet that Sonya Massey didn't throw the pot at the police officers. Now, if you're going to make a fair argument, you need to know what actually happened. Does Grayson's shooting of Massey fall within the legal boundaries? You're not an expert in this and you're not looking at the legal argument. That it was Massey who called the police for help in the first place. That the shooting occurred in Massey's own kitchen. That she was black and the officers were white. Did Deputy Sean Grayson, at the moment he fired that bullet through Sonia Massey's head, presenting as an unlawful, imminent, deadly force threat to himself? The element of reasonableness, both subjective and objective, is consistent with Sean Grayson's claim of self-defense. Sean Grayson did not imagine this boiling water. So they never forget! Say Louis! You know, it's not like she has a gun. It's not like she has a knife, you know, to threaten the, the life of this officer or sheriff or what have you. Maybe she sensed it. Her spirit probably knew, like, this is a bad cop right here. And he pulls it right away. He's like, no, you won't. That to me is wild. And right after, casually, he's like, nah, she's done. Messy past, horrid future. The tragic demise of Sonia Massey, a 36-year-old mother of two at the hands of then-deputy Sean Grayson, has ignited a firestorm of scrutiny and outrage not only because of the horrific incident, but also due to the deeply troubling history of misconduct that trailed Grayson throughout his career. Massey, who joined the heartbreaking list of black women slayed in their own homes by law enforcement, was fatally shot by Grayson on July 6, 2024, after she called 911 to report a possible prowler. Grayson's past is riddled with red flags that paint a disturbing picture. Before this fatal encounter, he had already faced multiple accusations and disciplinary actions during his short, tumultuous career in law enforcement and the military. From multiple DUI convictions and a questionable discharge from the Army to troubling incidents in various police departments across Illinois, Grayson's record is alarming. One of the most disturbing aspects of Grayson's past involves his interactions with vulnerable individuals, including allegations of misconduct during arrests and retaliatory behavior towards inmates. These incidents, which often went unpunished or were dismissed as unfounded, reveal a pattern of behavior that should have raised serious concerns long before he was hired by the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office. The fatal slaying of Massey, captured on body cam footage, shows a horrifying sequence of events where Grayson's aggression and reckless behavior escalated a routine call into a fatal encounter. His shocking comments and actions in the moments before and after the shooting reflect a disregard for human life that is both chilling and indefensible. Grayson has been charged with first degree and has pleaded not guilty, but the devastating impact of this case extends far beyond the courtroom. Massey's demise is a stark reminder of the systemic issues within law enforcement that allow individuals like Grayson to continue working despite repeated signs of dangerous conduct. Her family, like so many others, is left to mourn a beloved mother taken far too soon, while the community grapples with the ongoing quest for justice and accountability. How we are all not on the same page with what we see on that body cam. We don't have time to think when shit pop off. So again, you could never, you would never. Put the badge on and let me see you do it. It shoots you in the face. It is murder. He was scared for her life. What happened to Sonia Massey never would have happened to her if she would have been a white woman. Little ticked over asking her for her license. And she didn't have to give him her license. She was in her home. He's standing pretty close. Situational awareness. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And that man lost his shit. I will say it with until I turn blue in the face. And literally her in cold blood. He says, huh? She says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This sets him off. He goes off at being rebuked. I believe this wholehearted. They were irritated going up to her door. This was an innocent woman. Okay, I could hear it in their voice asking her for her ID. He saw her put the pot down. He keeps saying, drop the pot, drop the pot, drop the pot. This guy should have never been in law enforcement and he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah, she's still breathing but she's losing a lot of blood. No remorse, nothing. Troubling marriage history. The ongoing investigation into Sean P. Grayson has brought some deeply troubling aspects of his personal life to light.
Grayson, now facing charges for the fatal shooting of Sonia Massey, had a history of mental cruelty towards his ex-wife, Alexia K. Pitchford, that sheds light on his disturbing behavior. Back in June 2015, Pitchford, who was married to Grayson, sought a divorce, citing extreme and repeated acts of mental cruelty in her petition. The allegations outlined in the divorce filings paint a harrowing picture of a man who, behind closed doors, inflicted significant emotional pain on his spouse. The details of this mental cruelty have not been fully disclosed, but the mere fact that Pitchford felt compelled to include this in her divorce petition speaks volumes about the nature of their relationship. Grayson's ex-wife was granted the right to revert to her former name, which indicates the extent to which she wanted to distance herself from him. The absence of children in their marriage likely spared additional suffering, but the emotional toll on Pitchford was evidently significant. Her allegations raise serious questions about Grayson's ability to manage his emotions and the impact of his personal life on his professional conduct. This divorce isn't the only blemish on Grayson's personal record. Just two months after the divorce petition was filed, he received his first DUI, with a second following in July 2016. These incidents further suggest a pattern of reckless behavior and poor judgment, adding to the growing concerns about how Grayson was allowed to continue in law enforcement. The recent revelations about Grayson's past have only intensified the scrutiny on the Sangamon County Sheriff's Department and its hiring practices. As the investigation continues, the question remains, how did someone with such a troubling history manage to secure a position of authority and power? The blood is on the hands of the system as well as Sean Grayson. Wouldn't it be great if Illinois could uh, say as in the United States Congress so no other person has to suffer a tragic fate that there's already a proposed bill for Sonia Massey and that we want it to pass. That's why we have to have accountability on the department level. That's what we got to do. That's the reality. Can do better, we must do better. Illinois Sheriff stepping down. In the tragic incident that led to the demise of Sonia Massey, much of the focus has understandably been on Deputy Sean Grayson, the officer who pulled the trigger. However, the role of the second officer present during the incident has raised important questions. Should this officer also be held accountable for what transpired? This second officer, whose identity hasn't been widely publicized, was not just a bystander, he was an active participant in the events leading up to Massey's demise. The body cam footage revealed that he was involved in the search of Massey's property and was in close proximity when the fatal shots were fired. While Grayson was the one who shot Massey, the second officer failed to intervene when the situation escalated and Massey's life was in danger. The footage shows that after Massey was shot, this officer was the one who called in shots fired and requested emergency medical services. But the critical question is, should he have done more to prevent the shooting in the first place? Was there an opportunity to de-escalate the situation and did this officer miss it? Legal experts are divided on whether the second officer should face charges as an accomplice. Some argue that his failure to act makes him complicit in Massey's demise. Others believe that while his actions, or lack thereof, are concerning, they do not rise to the level of criminal liability. This situation brings to light a broader issue within law enforcement, the responsibility of officers to intervene when they witness potentially unlawful or excessive use of force by their colleagues. The concept of duty to intervene is gaining traction, and some states have already implemented laws requiring officers to step in when they see misconduct. This is, this is for my own safety. Oh, well, you know, tomorrow. I can't imagine that they're not going to release me. They're saying my charges are first degree murder, acting out with their weapon, and uh, Christian misconduct. They said this is for my own safety to put me in custody. So, so here I am. That's what the state's attorney agreed, or that's what the state's attorney made the charges. So. No, this whole new city yet. Mm -hmm. That's why hopefully I'll be out tomorrow. We have to file a motion for review and have a hearing thereon, which we did. We're here for Sia Massey. We're here every court date, every time we walk in this building, every time Sean Grayson is scheduled for court, you will see the Massey family. The judge then denied uh, 
Mr. Grayson's release. He stood on his first decision. And Sean Grayson has pleaded not guilty to murder, aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct. This comes after he was denied a pretrial release earlier this month. Former Deputy Sean Grayson will be at this 9 a.m. pretrial hearing today where the judge and attorneys will go over the facts of the case. A third call was made by Massey's mother who told emergency dispatchers her daughter was suffering from a mental health breakdown and that she feared police. Now, records released by Illinois authorities show that two 911 calls were made from Sonia Massey's home in the days leading up to her death. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We rebuke this discriminatory criminal justice system in the name of Jesus. Last week, we appealed that to the 4th District Appellate Court. That's going to take probably three, four months to get a decision out of the appellate court on that. Crimes against black women. The stark reality of crime against black women in America is deeply troubling. New data reveals that black women, especially those between the ages of 25 to 44, are six times more likely to be slayed than their white counterparts. This isn't just a statistic, it's a reflection of the harsh and often ignored conditions that many black women face daily in the U.S. The crime black women endure is often linked to a combination of factors, including structural racism, economic instability, and a lack of access to essential resources like housing and employment. These challenges are compounded by the widespread availability of firearms, which significantly increases the lethality of violent incidents. Intimate partner crime is a significant contributor to the high homicide rates among black women. It's a cycle of hurt that many women feel trapped in, often exacerbated by a fear of involving law enforcement. For many black women, the fear of being misunderstood or mistreated by police is real, leading them to avoid seeking help until it's too late. Karma Cotman, CEO of Ujima Inc., emphasizes that economic instability and strained relationships in impoverished communities contribute to the crime. The narrative that black women must be strong often prevents them from being seen as victims, further isolating them in dangerous situations. To combat this epidemic, it's essential to normalize conversations about domestic crime and address the root causes of these disparities. As the calls for stronger arm legislation and efforts to dismantle inequities grow louder, it's clear that more needs to be done to protect black women and ensure they no longer bear the brunt of America's failures. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.